Hey everyone, Dr. Mungli here. So in this particular video, I will be explaining you what happens whenever person gets into starvation and uh, catabolic condition. What happens to the skeletal muscle metabolism and what will happen to the skeletal muscle proteins. So whenever person gets into a starvation or prolonged fasting condition or when a person has got uh, malignancy going for a long period of time and also when the person is suffering from chronic disorders, chronic diseases where there will be stress involved, a lot of cortisol that is released into the blood. So what will happen to the skeletal muscle protein? So under stressful situation, under stressful condition, whether it is a disease, whether it is a chronic condition going on for a long time or the malignancy is going for a long time or the person is in starvation. So low insulin levels and increased cortisol level is going to cause skeletal muscle proteolysis. So, so when the skeletal muscle proteolysis is going on, so the proteins present in the skeletal muscles will undergo a breakdown process releasing amino acids. Now what will happen to the amino acids released in the skeletal muscle? So the carbon skeleton of amino acids will be used for energy process as I have written here. So the amino acids coming from the skeletal muscle proteolysis under the influence of low insulin and high cortisol levels. So the amino acids coming here, they will undergo transamination reaction. You can watch my video on transamination, link for that is there in the description below. Now the alpha ketoglutarate is combining with amino acid, that means it is going to receive amino group from amino acid. So where the alpha ketoglutarate is converted to glutamate and the amino acid carbon part is given as alpha keto acid. Now the alpha keto acid will get into energy metabolism majority of time. So the carbon skeleton of alpha uh, amino acids will go into energy metabolism within the skeletal muscle for the energy needs of the skeletal muscle. Whereas the glutamate which contains the amino group of this amino acid, it will undergo one more transamination reaction conducted by ALT that is alanine transaminase enzyme uh, is going to conduct that reaction. So it is going to convert, take the amino group from glutamate, put it onto pyruvate and the pyruvate will be converted to alanine and glutamate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate. So what will happen to alanine? Now the alanine is one of the predominant or primary amino acid that is secreted by the skeletal muscle. It will get into the blood. From the blood it will be taken up by the liver. So what will happen to alanine in the liver? Before I get into the alanine, let us see what other amino acid is secreted from the skeletal muscle during skeletal muscle proteolysis. It can be normal cell turnover or it may be any condition which leads to cachexia where there will be loss of skeletal muscle. So the glutamate that is present here, it can fix with ammonium ion, so any free ammonium ion that is produced by the metabolic process going on in the skeletal muscle. So free ammonium ion can be fixed to the glutamate to make a glutamine. This job is done by glutamine synthetase enzyme. Now once the glutamine is released, so this glutamine is also secreted into the blood, so it can be taken up by uh, liver. Okay. So there are other tissues which will take up glutamine. I will come to that point later. Now let us look at alanine. Alanine getting into the blood taken up by the liver. So in the liver, alanine will undergo transamination reaction conducted by ALT enzyme alanine transaminase. So it is going to give its amino group to alpha ketoglutarate and that makes glutamate and the carbon part of alanine is converted to pyruvate. Now what will happen to the pyruvate? It all, it all depends on the needs of the skeletal, uh, sorry, hepatocyte needs of the body. So predominantly when the person is in starvation and uh, fasting condition, cachexia condition, pyruvate is undergoing gluconeogenesis process and it will make uh, glucose. Pyruvate can be converted into glucose and glucose is released into the blood. So that will contribute to blood glucose level. That's the gluconeogenesis process. Or some of the pyruvate can be converted into acetyl-CoA. Now, that's the fate of uh, pyruvate. Now, let's see what happens to the glutamate here. Now, the glutamate which is released, it will be undergoing a GDH reaction, glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. I have a video on glut glutamate dehydrogenase reaction. The link for that video is there in the description below. 
Now, glutamate dehydrogenase releases religious glutamate, means converts glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate and ammonium ion is released and that ammonium ion, so it can go into urea cycle. So, it is going to contribute to urea formation in the liver. Now, what is the other fate of glutamate? Now, the glutamate here, it can undergo AST reaction, aspartate transamination reaction, where glutamate is uh, giving its amino group to oxaloacetate, thereby glutamate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate and oxaloacetate is converted to aspartate. Now, the aspartate, it will get into urea cycle, so that makes urea there. So, it means urea has got uh, two nitrogen, basically urea is uh, NH2, CO, NH2. So, one of the nitrogen in urea is coming from free ammonium ion, another nitrogen in the urea is coming from aspartate. That's how the urea is synthesized there. Now, let's see what happens to the glutamine coming from skeletal muscle. Glutamine entering into the blood is taken up by liver. Liver is another predominant organ. Glutamine is taken up from the blood. Glutamine is also taken up by the kidney and glutamine is can be taken up by intestine. So, intestine uses glutamine for its own energy purpose. Let's see what is the liver is going to do with the glutamine. Glutamine is going to be converted into glutamate by releasing ammonium ion by glutaminase enzyme which is a mitochondrial reaction. So, ammonium ion release there. That ammonium ion can go into urea cycle. Now, the furthermore glutamate can undergo glutamate dehydrogenase reaction releasing one more ammonium ion making alpha ketoglutarate that ammonium ion can go into urea cycle. So, this is how alanine and glutamine coming out of skeletal muscle. Alanine gets uh, carbon skeleton is pyruvate which goes into glucose and the amino group is going ultimately into urea mediated by glutamate. Glutamine going into the liver, glutaminase enzyme releasing ammonium ion which goes into urea cycle. Furthermore, glutamate here is undergoing glutamate dehydrogenase reaction releasing one more ammonium ion that will also go into urea cycle. Now, let's see what happens if urea cycle is saturated. What happens if there is too much of ammonium that is produced? What happens if there is a liver failure or hepatocyte is not functioning? So, in conditions where there is a saturation of the urea cycle or in the conditions where the liver is not able to handle all the ammonium ion that is coming into the liver. So, when ammonium ion builds up to a certain concentration, to the threshold levels, during that time what happens? So, the reversal of the re these reactions will go on. That means, when there is elevation of ammonium ion like here, so it is going to be fixed with alpha ketoglutarate to make glutamate. By the same enzyme, glutamate dehydrogenase, it is going to conduct a reversible reaction. This happens only when there is high levels of ammonia accumulated in the liver. So, ammonium ion is fixed to alpha ketoglutarate by glutamate dehydrogenase. Glutamate is made and now this glutamate it will be fixed with um, one more ammonium ion to make glutamine. This job is done by glutamine synthetase enzyme. Glutamine synthetase. Glutamine synthetase enzyme is going to fix one more ammonium ion to glutamate to make glutamine. And that glutamine, it will be secreted into the blood and that will be taken up by the kidney. So, it will be filtered, means it will be uptaken by the uh, kidney. And what kidney does with this glutamine? So, the glutamine in the kidney is broken down into glutamate. Glutamine is broken down into glutamate and releasing ammonium ion, NH4 plus here. And this, uh, this job is done by glutaminase enzyme in the kidney. Glutaminase and ammonium ion will be secreted into the urine. So, this is an alternative way for our body to uh, get rid of ammonium ion out of our body. So, by breaking glutamine into glutamate and glutamate releasing ammonium ion and furthermore this uh, sorry glutamine releasing ammonium ion there furthermore glutamate is converted to alpha ketoglutarate releasing one more ammonium ion and which is secreted into urine. So, overall our body is trying to get rid of ammonium ion here because there will be lot of ammonium ion being accumulated. So, this is how uh, uh, whenever skeletal muscle proteolysis is going on under different conditions, especially referred as cachexia. So, during that time, amino acid nitrogen is handled 
in the liver by making it as urea and whenever urea cycle is saturated during that time the excess ammonium ion is sent to the kidney in the form of glutamine glutamine is converted to glutamate glutamate into alpha ketoglutarate and that the ammonium ions released here they will be secreted into the urine thereby kidney will help in getting rid of ammonium ion into the urine during excess ammonium levels in our body so this is what is all about the involvement of muscle liver and the kidney in handling ammonium ions in our body i hope this video has helped you in understanding uh, the concept that uh, that is explained here so and also i have uh, links on other videos related to the concepts that i have explained so you can take a look at those videos if you have any question put that question down in the uh, comment section below if you like the video give thumbs up and also make sure to subscribe to this channel so that you get our uh, regular updates as and when i make videos thanks for watching and uh, see you in my next video